Well, it is January. It is four below zero Fahrenheit where I live. And although the PDU has got some problems here, it will still show me that I'm pulling nine amps on bank one and six amps on bank two for a total of 16 amps. This is a 30 amp PDU, so I'm pretty comfortable going all the way up to 40 amps on this bad boy. And what that essentially means is we need to get this thing working. This is one of my Octominer X12 Pros. This is one of the few that has actually had the PSU already adjusted for only 220 volts. So what I'm gonna do tonight is make sure that this is working. I'm actually gonna replace the RAM in it and I'm going to test all of the new DDR3 that I've got right there from Amazon, because I don't know if it works. And then I'm gonna resistor mod the power supply because I do not want this little mosquito ruining my home environment. Not that it's quiet, but it's not terrible here. And yeah, I know it's a mess, whatever, who cares? But anyway, I'm gonna fill this with CMP 50HX blowers, the ones that I have that actually work from Coastal Crypto. <laughs> Crypto. And uh, yeah, I think this already had CMPs in it at one point in the past, so it should be easy enough. Let's rip this thing open, get it plugged in, let's get it booted, and then let's start testing RAM, then we'll resistor mod the power supply, then we'll get cards in here, and hopefully everything's okay. All right, so the four gigabyte module that works just fine is pulled, and I have two eight gigabyte modules in there right now. I'm not gonna run it with 16 gigs of RAM because that's ridiculous, but I do wanna boot it up and make sure that they both work. Oh, look at that. I've already got the cord already up here and set. HDMI is plugged in. I do not have a boot drive hooked in just yet, but I will. Just wanna make sure it posts and everything is good. But let's get this thing hooked into 240 and see what's what, shall we? There we go. All right, that all went just fine. With the caveat, I had to put in a GPU to get display out on this because the HDMI port on the main board is either too dirty or just broken. I'm not really sure, it doesn't matter. That RAM is good. Uh, next up, before I do anything else, I'm gonna try the other set of RAM I have just to make sure it's good. And then we will drop to eight gigs, then we'll get the CMPs loaded up. Oh shoot, the uh, PSU mod, we gotta do that too. All right, both sets of RAM, A-OK. -okay. Pull this bad boy out, uh, all right. We're just gonna be running eight gigs, which is more than plenty. And yeah, next thing, I gotta yank this power supply out, which doesn't look like a whole bunch of fun, but maybe I can just yank it all out the back here. We'll see. All right, so just like the Vitretti, my plan is to peel back some of this uh, jacketing here and we look for the black wire. I'm gonna solder in one of these big boy resistors. So go back and look at the video for silencing the Vitretti fan if you're curious, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do next year. So that's a nice fan, but it's flowing way too much, just unnecessarily too much. So in case you're too lazy to go back, essentially this is what I'm doing. That's the fan wire. This is the ground side of the fan. This is my big old resistor. I'm gonna tin up both sides of the wire tin up the resistor and I'm gonna mount this in line and then wrap it in some captain tape before reassembling it. What this is going to do is it's going to limit that 12 watt fan to four watts, which is what I personally wanna do. There we are, just gonna wrap her up in captain tape and we should be good to go there. The reason why I did a ground leg is because if it does happen to short on a heat sink, the likely odds is the fan will just go back to full speed, which isn't ideal either, but at least it's less likely to do damage than an unfused 12 volt positive. So that's what it sounds like with the resistor mod, so much better. Still a pretty decent torrent of airflow coming out of there, and a lot more is gonna be forced through by those case fans when I have them turned up a little bit. So again, eight gigs of RAM. I did put an MSATA back in here, and right now I'm just booting it into Hive and I'm gonna transfer the contents of this USB over onto the MSATA, then we'll throw in some CMP50s. It's a process, man. It is a process. I ran into a problem with the MSATA, so I'm just gonna boot off the USB for right now, but we are now to the point where loading this thing up with CMPs is the play. So I don't think it's well enough balanced where it is to do that, but I'm gonna figure out a way to get this thing loaded up We'll get it booted and then we'll get it mining. I'm noticing I had a rig offline, so we're actually at 19 amps and this should be 1200 watts. 
on Radiant or Dynex best case. So it'll put us at maybe 24 amps, which is the 80% rule for a 30 amp. So it should be pretty much perfect. Well, that's done with. Let me put the lid on it. It's not ideal. Each one of the triple eight pin main leads has to be split once to do a set of four eight pins. So there are only six total triple strands coming out of the PSU, but I have bought some of these Octos from a dude that used to run these exact 50 HXs in them long-term with no issues. So I'm gonna put the lid on it and assume that we're all good here. We'll boot it up. Oh, man, I need to go to bed. So let's hope this all works. Well, she's hammering away on Dynex. Good enough. So let me shut her down, get her placed somewhere uh, a little less precarious, and then fire it back up for heat. Hi, Jada. Hi. Hello. 